hey, you nature lovers and carers and custodians for this beautiful Earth planet that at this present moment is so under threat of reduction of wildlife and diversity, particularly biodiversity. And many of you might be asking yourself, how can we help to enhance biodiversity? Why is biodiversity so important? And what means and tools and methods and approaches do we have to actually actively contribute to regenerating biodiversity? And what is it really? And we know that we are in an event that we call the sixth biggest extinction event, which some people focus on what we're losing and other people are more focusing on the paradigm shift and the potential that it opens up for new life to be created on this earth. And just like the butterfly grows out of the caterpillar and goes through the transformation in the chrysalis, and some cells might be concerned about what we're losing, which is the old caterpillar body, which is the old greedy earth of competition and the elimination of biodiversity, monocropping and killing the land and the biodiversity in the soil with pesticides and herbicides, etc. We have other means to focus on the butterfly, which in this transformation, the chrysalis is opening up and creating freedom and a new life and a new expression that's ever so much more beautiful and diversified. So biodiversity for me really is looking at the old cultures and the transitions in history, when in the Amazon or in other areas of the earth, people have actually created biodiversity. For example, in the Amazon jungle and also in the Yucatan Peninsula, many agroecologists have studied that you can find it was actually human interaction and cultural impulses, spiritual impulses and knowledge and wisdom and intuition that helped the uh, beautiful cultures that we miss uh, of the indigenous people in those areas, also in the Central European Alp, uh, Alpine environment, where we still have diversified integra integrated integral farms that are growing all the different crops and looking after the wildlife, as we call it, I call it rather the natural life uh, that we caring for. And for that, we have a, a modern conscious approach, which is called biodynamic farming and gardening, which its approach is to look at the different elements that we need to bring about biodiversity. In a garden, it's pretty simple. And in a farm, it's a bit more complex. But basically, you see where the biodiversity is intact, the economic basis for a diversified life in terms of economy, an enhanced economy and, and culture is much thriving. And also social uh, conflict is less rife where you have abundance of beautiful uh, diversity on the land and in terms of the crops and the different raw materials that we get from the land that we can use for our human needs. So it is very clear that through a biodynamic approach or an approach of organic consideration of the soil, we can enhance the, bi the biodiversity of the soil organisms like the mycorrhiza and the mycelium. And we use different methods and approaches in biodynamic uh, gardening, which um, are comprised as it follows, and you wonder what they might be. Uh, one is a sound crop rotation that people always practice. So it's an insurance against crop failure that you have at least 10, 15 in the garden, even 40 crops, which already creates a huge diversity uh, for the insect life and particularly the bees and the wasps and the butterflies and what have you. Uh, all the other insects and also the soil organisms if you have such a diversity of cropping. And if that's now, if you imagine interspaced and intermixed, interplanted with the natural herbs, the flowers, our cultivated herbs, which are culinary and medicinal, suddenly you're starting having in an area of your little garden at least 80 or 100 or 150 different species of plants that co-live and coexist under the guidance of the custodians of the garden or the steward or stewardess, if we want to say it. And you have a different expression of that area. If you now add to this ornamental uh, plants that would help you to also attract other natural expressions like the, the whole world of the birds 
and um, other animals that come out of the forest and the hedgerows that will accompany you in the garden, you are already doing a huge amount of work of improving the biodiversity in your area. We are looking at disturbing the soil less and therefore enhancing and accelerating the growth of mycorrhiza and the mixture of our cultivated flora. Another way that you could do uh, a favor for biodiversity is to look at the cultivating the soil only when necessary. Uh, if you cultivate less like we do in biodynamic gardening, um, how do you deal with the wild plants that might be competing with your cultivated plants? And the wonderful thing is you might have heard of homeopathy, homeopathy, a uh, homeopathic approach to working with human health and in uh, veterinary for animal health. And uh, luckily in the early days, uh, when we were given the agriculture lectures by Rudolf Steiner, we learned that we can actually use homeopathy both to balance the one-sidednesses in the biodiversity. In actual fact, when we get climax culture through monocropping, et cetera, we can enhance the biodiversity by taking away the possibility for certain organisms to manifest through homeopathic means of creating our homeopathic remedies and balance the wildlife, both in the flora and in the fauna. And doing that, we introduce that possibility for a growth and expression of the environment that's enhanced because as custodians of biodynamic gardening, we wanna enhance the expression, the multitude of expressions in our environment. We are also looking to do the same for the soil by using, as I said already, the crop rotation, companion planting, but also we can use mulching, we can use the aspect of composting, humus formation that creates stable humus that will last in the soil instead of using fresh manures or young compost manuring uh, approaches where we actually break down the humus instead of sequestering carbon with a long-term finished stable uh, humus that we create in our compost piles accompanied and guided with the biodynamic preparations and with all that we are enhancing the biodiversity of soil life expression and we know now that there are more microbes in the soil in a square meter or even in a handful of soil than the stars in the universe that we have discovered so far and that's just the micro life, not let alone the macro life. And we know now that uh, we have probably only discovered a percent of the biodiversity in the soil. So there's much more to be discovered about that in the near future, I'm hoping. And we will help doing that by setting up gardens that will also be a ground for doing research, investigation and discovery through our phenomenological approach of becoming true scientists with pure observation, with developing our imagination, our inspiration, our intuition, and bring all those aspects from a multi-level approach of diversity also in terms of our attitudes and the way we express ourselves in the garden and feel our way into the garden and give to the garden from ourselves, from our enthusiasm, our motivation, our interest, we can create biodiversity there's so many physiological ways of doing uh, a good favor to creating biodiversity, but the best one is also always our attitudes and the gratitude for all the good crops we get from the garden. And if you wanna find out more of how to really enhance the quality and the quantity of your cropping creating abundance, then you might join and I invite you to come online with us to grow your own health and you'll find out all the tricks of the trade of how to deal with these new challenges that we're facing with on the one hand, certain organisms disappearing. And yet we know from the last great extinctions with the human help, with our creative, innovative and sensitive help, we will be able to assist that new organisms will evolve in the near future. And I'm very confident that therefore we are instrumental in finding tools, approaches in the human realm to bring culture and nature together again as one 
in a new expression of biodiversity. And I'll leave you with that thought, contemplate on it and find out more by joining us on Grow Your Own Health.